So we are now going to be talking about section 18 in the version of the T-bill that House Transportation was working on yesterday. I don't think there is an expectation that this language is going to change. I am going to do just the barest of walkthroughs because I uh, looked ahead on your um, agenda and I know you've got a slide deck coming up with way more information about the Transportation Alternatives Grant Program than I'm gonna be able to provide. But before you look at this language, the Transportation Alternatives Grant Program is funded entirely with federal money and the local match that are not transportation fund dollars that goes to it. The um, eligibility is uh, dictated by federal law and in the IJA, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, the amount of money that is going to be available under the Transportation Alternatives Grant Program has increased. So what Section 18 is going to do in this form is it's cleaning up some of the outdated language You'll see in subdivision F1 at the bottom of page 26, it's talking about what was gonna happen in fiscal years 2018 and 2019. And then in the next subdivision in fiscal years 2020 and 2021, deleting that language, not applicable anymore. And then starting in fiscal year 2024, instead of having there be a $1,100,000 as the sort of presumptive amount that is going to go to municipalities for environmental mitigation projects, instead, it would be 50% of the total amount that's available in grant program funds, unless there is um, less interest from the applications for those environmental mitigation projects, in which case it would be lower. And then the balance, and this language is on lines eight to 10 of page 27, the balance would go to any eligibility activity in accordance with the priority um, that's the, the prioritization that's established in what was subdivision four, but would now be subdivision two. So shifting away from this presumptive minimum of $1,100,000 and then having it be a percentage of the total funds available. And the expectation is that that will almost exclude, always be above $1,100,000 uh, based on how much is expected to come to Vermont. Unless, of course, the interest from the municipalities that are applying is less than that. And with that, as sort of your understanding of what the language would do, I think you probably want to hear from the agency on um, the program in general and the historical. Yeah, I, I, I want to know in accordance with the priorities established in subdivision two. I'm yep. looking, I don't. Just uh, scroll down a little bit, starting at line 11, you'll see the subdivision four is struck out and it's now going to be subdivision two. And it's giving preferential weighting to projects involving as a primary feature, a bicycle or pedestrian facility. That's it? That's our priority? I'm seeing a nod from Scott Robertson. I can start whenever you're ready. Just give me the signal. It says in accordance with the priorities established. And that is the balance of, of the, the language. And so our priorities are only one. Bicycle pedestrian. Oh, keep in mind. Uh, my pad. So there also is that you need to remember that there is all of the federal eligibility criteria that's there. So this is just the priority that um, Vermont has put in place sort of as a narrowing of federal eligibility. Right. And you get the link to federal eligibility up in the uh, beginning of the language. Um, and that is awards shall be made eligible to entities as defined under 23 USC section 133H and limiting in activities that are authorized under federal law. And I believe there's been an expanding of what activities are authorized in the IIJA. Um, okay, shall be awarded in accordance with the priority. They shall be awarded. So what we're saying is 50% shall be awarded to but then we say, shall give preferential weighting to projects involving as a primary feature. So I'm having a hard time reconciling the language um, on, um, on 10 with the language um, in um, uh, line uh, 14, 15, 16 in that section. That's what I'm struggling with, the language. Okay, um, so the thing I would point out there is 
This is current law. It is moving what is currently on lines one, two, and three at the top of page 27 that's being struck out. Um, and it's saying that it should be done in accordance with the priorities established in subdivision four, what will now become subdivision two. So I think to the extent that your question is about what really is existing law, it might be helpful to hear from the agency in terms of how they are interpreting that. The other thing I would point out in the language, and this is existing statute, is that the um, degree of preferential weighting and the determination is at the complete discretion of the agency. So there is a lot of discretion that then is being um, given to the agency in both interpreting this language and in how it actually is going forward in the evaluation of what the weighting should be when it comes to that limited amount of preferential criteria that's in statute. And I can look into the history of how this language sort of um, came to be, but since it's not a change from existing statute, I, I didn't um, dive into the legislative history there, but I certainly can if it's something you're interested in. Uh, I, I guess maybe nobody else is struggling with what I, it says on line nine, shall be awarded for any, shall be awarded um, for, with the priorities. Um, which means that 50%, we said, what shall be awarded um, in accordance with the priorities of subdivision two. And then subdivision two now, which is existing language, I guess, um, shall, um, I guess, in accordance with the priorities established. And I only see, um, I don't see a priorities being it, it, priorities are preferential weighting to projects involving bike or ped. So uh, one is using the term priority and the other is using preferential weighting. And um, so shall be awarded. Oh, anyway, I don't know. Forget it. I'm just having a hard time with priorities yeah. and weighting. Okay, I, I, I think I understand a little bit more now. And um, I would say if you look at it, the shall be awarded would apply to the any eligible activity. So think of that as, as one discrete piece. And then for the next part, it needs to be in accordance with the priorities. And to the extent that you're seeing a disconnect between your saying priorities, yet then in the other language, it's preferential. I think that is meant to trying to, to sort of think about um, how the sections fit together, say that it is a priority to give preferential weighting to this limited subset of projects that have as a primary feature, a bicycle or pedestrian feature. I see where you're having a disconnect there with using priority and preferential treatment. And I think we certainly could craft a modification of that language that maybe has some more clarity and consistency in the phrasing. But for purposes of the language that you have here with house transportation's um, intent with the language to only be changing that 1.1 million minimum, none of the other language was, was yeah, modified. Right. But you're going to get the villain. You can modify it all you want. Well, but they're also talking about, I guess, oh, wait, and the balance shall be. So um, so I, they're adding the language on 9 and 10 as well. As 50, I don't have a problem with 50% rather than getting a specific figure. But um, it's just the additional language shall be awarded. Yeah, and that language is actually moving down from what struck out on lines one to three. It's just rearranging okay. the structure of the section a little bit. But that is existing language. It's existing phrasing that is in the statute now. Well, you know, that's the whole thing. When you go back and look at something, then it raises questions, even though it's in place. So all they yeah. want to do is get rid of the dollar, exact dollar figure and say 50%, which is pretty straightforward. So I wish I hadn't looked at it. Now I'm, I'm using too much gray cells and I don't have very many left. All right. Okay. Who would, uh, Scott, are you on? Who would, who's next with us this morning? I know you've been chopping up. Okay. <laughs> can you hear me right now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Senator Mazza. Yeah, my name is Scott Robertson. Uh, I'm an engineer for the Trans uh, Project Manager, as well as the coordinator for the Transportation Alternative Program uh, grant solicitation. So, uh, and I've put together a presentation uh, to go over the basic highlights of this. 
Um, and I believe Joel Perigo, the, the, the manager of the municipal assistance is also on here with us. Yeah, okay. So here I go, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Mm -hmm. right, and hopefully you can see that. Yeah. So the Trans-Based Alternative Program, um, uh, like was already said, it, it's uh, we, we budget about $2.2 million a year for solicitation and that's all federal funding. Uh, we have a $300,000 cap uh, per grant with an 80% federal, 20% local uh, funding split. And there is a preferential weighting applied to bike and ped, uh, pedestrian facilities when mm -hmm. applicable. I threw that when applicable in there because if we do uh, set aside you know, uh, environmental mitigation funding, the preference for that, that, those preferences don't apply to those funds. Oh, sorry about that. So eligible applicants, um, we have a lot of eligible applicants here of, of agencies, but basically 99% of applicants are towns. We can't even count on one hand uh, applicants that aren't towns. So basically towns apply for this funding, even though it is possible for a few other agencies to, to apply. Uh, eligible projects, <clears throat> we have seven types of eligible projects, and this is a bit wordy. Basically category A and B here, uh, for a long time, they were the meat of the whole thing. They're, that is the bike and pedestrian, sidewalks, shared use paths, uh, ADA compliant ramps, and uh, associated items like safety lighting, uh, things like that, line striping. That all applies here in, in uh, categories A and B. B. Uh, category C uh, is conversion of abandoned railroad corridors for trails for, for bikes and pedestrians. Uh, Category D is for uh, turnouts, overlooks, and viewing areas, which we have not seen one application for that yet. Uh, L category E, uh, community improvement activities, uh, includes historic preservation, things like covered bridges uh, or train stations. We've had a few applications for that. Vegetation management practices in a very utilitarian sense, not a beautification sense. Uh, is an eligible application and um, archeological activities relating to transportation are also eligible. And now here we are with category F, which is our new focus uh, with the set asides, um, environmental mitigation activities. Uh, and subcategory I is basically the stormwater management control uh, category for uh, a, a lot of types of projects. And I have a slide with some examples coming up here. Uh, this is also where salt sheds kind of fits into the, the program. And then we also have uh, subcategory F2, which is wildlife uh, mortality uh, uh, mitigation projects. And category G is a bit redundant. It's the old Safe Routes to School program that is incorporated into this program. Uh, so a little bit about salt sheds, because I, I know that comes up a bit. Um, FHWA has allowed us the flexibility to actually incorporate these salt sheds with these funds. Uh, so they're eligible under the environmental mitigation uh, category. Um, we consider them on a case-by-case -case basis. They're kind of tough to score because you know, with respect to water quality improvement, uh, you know, because comparing you know, the scoring committee, com comparing uh, elements, it's, it, it's a bit challenging, but, but we do. We <laughs> Um, here's the, our incorporated language, basically any environmental mitigation activity, including pollution prevention and the pollution abatement activities, uh, to address stormwater management control, um, related to highway construction, uh, runoff. So basically, uh, we do get an awful lot of salt shed applications now. Uh, it's uh, especially when there's a set aside. I get those calls all the time. Is, it, is this the year where we've got a set aside for stormwater? Because if not, some municipalities will wait until we do before they apply. Um, right now, VTRANS, and, and I'm mainly coordinating this, is a, a policy document which, which will help define and clarify the parameters regarding the scope, cost, eligibility, and scoring for future salt shed applications, just to clear things up because the, the applications seem to be expanding into 
perhaps more than the original intent was. But um, so we're still working on fine tuning that. Uh, here's an example of, of a bunch of uh, environment mitigation projects, uh, anywhere from planning studies for phosphorus control or stormwater infantry inventories to uh, uh, gravel wetlands, permeable pavers, check dams, uh, detention ponds, which are very common. Gravel wetlands are, are very popular and, and, and for the dollar provide the best bang for the buck for actually being water. <laughs> um, so here's some examples of, of things that might be eligible in, our, in the TAP program. So a bit of history, just so you guys are aware. Uh, TAP started in 2013. Before that, it was the Transportation Enhancement Program. Uh, and all categories applied up until uh, 2016, where we started this set aside for 50%. Actually, it was stated as 1.1 million set aside for stormwater. And we, that, that was uh, uh, in effect for two years. Then in 2018 and 19, it was 100% uh, stormwater quality improvement projects. Uh, then in 20, uh, 2020, uh, up until 2021, it was all categories again. And, and here we are back into 50% for state fiscal year 2022, as it was solicited uh, that way. Um, and here's just a quick little chart that I put together on some history of uh, demand versus awarded. Uh, we always try to stick very close to 2.2 million in the awarded category, but uh, back in 2018, this goes back five years, uh, the demand, we, we, we received $5.7 million in applications. Uh, and I believe the pandemic years, once we get down to 2020, it kind of dropped a bit. And I believe the pandemic might have something to do with that. But we normally get between four to $6 million of, of, of applications. Uh, that boils down to about 30 applications. We normally award about eight of those. To, to, to utilize the 2.2 million. And this is just a quick summary of what the last five years look like. So real quick uh, overview, that's it. I believe that's my last slide, it is. Um, and uh, I can keep sharing either one, any one of these slides if you'd like or answer questions. Any questions from the committee at this time? I have a I have a question, Senator. Go right ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to go back to Senator Kitchell's line of questioning about the prioritization or preferential weighting to bicycle and pedestrian facilities. As I see the actual breakout here, it almost seems like we are spending more money on non-environmental um, focuses over the years past, like disproportionately. And I'm just I'm trying to um, to understand why we wouldn't want to, as a state, motivate the municipalities with preferential treatment to focus on the environmental uh, item F of your eligible products, environmental mitigation activities, and then also the safe routes uh, to school program. It almost seems like the focus on bicycle and pedestrian growth facilities is neglecting the infrastructure we have and the safety and the environmental concerns. Where does this language come from, the, the pre preferential weighting for bicycle and pedestrians? What's the motivation for that in your mind, if you might speak to that? Well, if, if you read back just in history, it, it, it's federally driven and, and historically driven that, uh, that that's what this, the original intent was, uh, not maybe not the intent, but but the uh, likelihood of an application was much higher for something like a sidewalk or a shared use path. Or that's just that's just where it all seemed to uh, focus on the most. Until we had these set asides, the environmental mitigation projects were uh, a, a small percentage of our application. So maybe it's, it, it it could just be what was being applied for at the time, uh, and that the history goes back into the TE program, which goes back you know uh, to uh, the 90s. Um, it, that's just how it precipitated. So I'm not sure where it all started, but that's as in, until we started setting this aside. It, it was mostly uh, bike and pedal related uh, projects. Now, Joel, maybe you've got some more to add to that. Yeah, I, I can a little bit. <clears throat> excuse my voice a little bit. Um, for the record, I'm Joel Perigo, the Municipal Assistance Program Manager. Um, I, I think, and this predates me a little bit too. Um, the intent here was that um, back when the clean water bill passed, um, there was an opportunity um, to, to put some more funding into our obligations as part of the clean water bill. 
And so one way to capture that was to sort of enhance this environmental mitigation category by putting this set aside out. Um, and then in the years, I don't know if Scott's got it up there still. Yeah, I mean, uh, 2018 and 2019, all of that funding um, was put out for environmental mitigation only. And that was to basically show that we were, we were putting that money into clean water investments. But historically speaking, um, both the transportation enhancements and transportation alternatives prior to the clean water bill, you know, uh, as Scott said, 95% of our applications were always in that transport, um, excuse me, bike ped type facility. Um, it's sort of like always been the place, the to go place for municipalities when they want to build a sidewalk and that sort of thing. So um, hopefully that clarifies oh. and answers your question. And just as a quick follow up, uh, I, I would just wonder why we wouldn't want to, through a policy lens, in focus or at least encourage or make equal weighting the environmental uh, potential projects since that's such an important topic these days. Well, well, keep in mind too, though, that so with this set aside, the, the environmental, and it, like Scott started to get into, comparing an environmental mitigation project to a bike ped project is difficult to do. And so with this set aside, they, you know, they're on their, they're on off to the side here, they get that half half of the appropriation and now the remaining categories the bike ped projects as well as all those other projects that scott went through um the different categories um get the other 50 percent with the bike peds being preferentially weighted on that side is sure. that okay yeah, thank you thank you okay any other questions comments I guess not. Okay. Uh, all right. Nobody else has anything. The agency had anything else to offer? Anybody? Anthea, anything to offer? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.